Let's continue to talk about pointers. We will talk more detail how to compare pointers and what should we be careful when we initialize pointers. And at the end, of course, we can pass pointer as a function parameter. We're using two different ways. Sometimes we're using a pointer just as a variable reference. And sometimes we can pass a pointer just like an array. So the first thing we see how to compare pointers. So the pointer comparison, they including the rational operator. We can use in the less than, greater or equal. Of course, you can use the greater or less equal, or we can have the equal equal. So that's the rational operator we can all use for the pointer comparison. So when you're using the pointer comparison for those operators, you are compare the address in the pointer. So we need to be careful. Sometimes when we're using the pointer ad pointer variable, they are referred to the address. But sometimes remember we can use in the dereference operator, the asterisk. So when you're using the asterisk, you are compare the variable the pointer referred to. So that's why there are two different comparisons. When you're comparing the address in the pointer, so that's you only compare two pointer variable. For example, like this. If we have the point uh, PTR1 and PTR2, they both are int pointer. So maybe here that's at, we have int pointer. We declare two pointer variable called int, called point um, PTR1 and PTR2. So then if you're only using the pointer variable, use any rational operator, we are compare the address. But if you try to use in the dereference, associate with your pointer variable, that means you dereference this pointer to the variable, the memory address of the variable they refer to. So here you need to have both because only pointer, pointer they can compare. When they dereference, only dereference value we can compare. So when you dereference, because this pointer PTR1 refer to an integer variable. So they were using that integer variable value to compare with the PTR2, the int variable they refer to. So when you do the dereference symbol with your pointer variable, you are comparing the contents of the variable the pointers refer to. So that's how we will compare the pointer. So we need to be careful. Whenever you use a rational operator, no matter it's less than, greater than, or equal, equal, they compare only the same data type. If you compare the address, you compare the pointer variable. If we want to dereference as the value, then they both need to dereference as the value. So that's only for the pointer variable. So just like we say in the lab exercise 13, when we have an array, array name just work like a pointer. So when we initialize a pointer called PTR, we can assign the array name to the pointer. So when we assign the array name to the pointer, this PTR, and the array name, they both refer to the beginning of the array value. Remember before we show you the picture. So here you see that's how they look like. Remember you have an array, so they are 10 to 50. So then here you have your array name, they refer to the beginning of the memory location for the array. So when you have your PTR refer to the same as the array name. What happened is then I have a pointer. 
So then usually graphically we're using the pointer. Then they refer to this, the same memory location. We point to by the value because that's all the beginning of the address here. So that's why you can use in the values square bracket to access the index one by one. Or you can use the PTR name associated with your square bracket operator. They can access the element one by one as well. So then we need to be careful. If we only have pointer variable itself, that's the memory address. So then we compare they with the array name. Because array name is referred to the address. Pointer itself, variable, is referred to the address. So then, of course, we also can do the pointer arithmetic, right? Remember, we can add the pointer variable by one. So earlier, PTR referred to the beginning of the array. So PTR plus one, so that's here. So let me give you the PTR plus one. Okay, so here is PTR plus one. Because remember, when we do the arithmetic for the calculation for the pointer, they will automatically, using the pointer data type, then plus one, they will add four byte to that. So they refer to the next integer value. So they are still comparing the address. So then when you want to compare the content, so here when we have the content, we do the PTR dereference, right? Right, so here actually you cannot do equal equal to values. Instead, actually you need to do is equal equal values, right? Values is array name only, so that's the address. They cannot compare with the value here. So whenever you dereference your pointer, on the other hand, you need to give them your index associate with your array. So then we are comparing the content. So when I say the contents, we are comparing the value in each element of the array. So then continue, right? If I want to dereference the PTR plus one, so be careful you add the first. So you have your parentheses. So then you dereference. So we can check if this one equal equal to the values two. Uh, but values two actually is 30. So here, this one, PTR plus one actually is 20. So here, they actually comparing 20 on uh, equal equal to 30 or not. So that's how we were comparing the pointer. So be careful. Sometimes if you want to compare the address, you're only using the pointer variable alone. If we want to compare the value referred to, you need to use in the dereference symbol. So that's the asterisk. So here we say the PTR plus one parenthesis pointer is 20, right? So now let me ask you a question. How about I do PTR, this one, plus one? Can I do this? Yeah, actually you can do this, right? Because if you do the PTR, you dereference first. So let me put them together so you will see here. So you can do the dereference first. So if you dereference first, you are referred to the 10. Then you plus one. So then this one actually is 10 plus one equal to 11. Okay, see if you understand this. So that's we talk about how to compare pointers. Sometimes you can compare the pointer variable. Sometimes you can compare the value pointer referred to using the dereference symbol. After we know about the comparing the pointer and you understand the pointer more now, I just want to remind you a couple of things when you initialize the pointer. So when we declare and initialize the pointer at the definition time, you see here, actually they can define in the same line. But here, when we do the int, none, that's mean I define a int variable called none. So then you see you have this int, right? But then you have this 
asterisk pointer symbol associated with your noun ptr. So actually, the whole th the noun ptr variable is an int pointer. So you can declare then at the same time you can declare the noun variable. So then you have your pointer variable. When you declare this pointer variable, you right away can assign the address for some variable. So for this one, after I declare a noun int variable, then I have the noun ptr to refer to the location of the noun variable. Of course, we say you also can refer to the array, right? So then you can define an array called val. So you have size 3. So then you have another int pointer called val ptr. So then they refer to the beginning of the val array. So sometimes you can define a pointer and initialize at the same time. If sometimes you don't know what your pointer value will be, that's really highly recommended to initialize the pointer variable to a no pointer. So the no pointer is we talk about on Monday. That's a C++ key C++ 11 after keyword. So then for example, when you declare a ptr pointer variable. For now, if you don't know what the value will be, instead of they will refer to the garbage memory location we had priorly, then you can just have this ptr to assign to the no pointer keyword. So this one actually they just fill zero in the ptr variable location. So when you have a pointer value equal to zero, it just means this pointer not really refer to any variable yet. So that's why sometimes if you do like this, we can do an operator function to test if a pointer point to an empty address. So like here, if not pointer. You see here, because the PTR, even we assign PTR equal to the no pointer, it just means that location is zero. So when we have the PTR pointer we assign to the no pointer, actually they just look like this. You have your PTR pointer variable, right? So then we assigned four bytes in the 32-bit environment. So assigned to the no pointer actually just means this four byte equal to zero. So when a pointer value is zero, it just means they refer to an empty address. So here, sometime in the C++, we want to see if a pointer refers to a value or not. We can do like this. Because you see here, if not PTR, we do something. If this address is not empty, we do something. Because you see here, if this one is zero, right? Okay, so that's false. So if not false, that means this one is the empty location. So if the PTR refer to an empty location, so we do something. So that's how we initialize the pointer. You can either initialize the value during the definition time, or you don't know the value, just give them the zero. And also we have a couple more things you need to be careful. When you have initialized the pointer, be careful, do not mix up your data type. If you have a double variable, you cannot define an int pointer to refer to this double variable. This one we will have the compiling error because the pointer has their variable refer to, they have data type here. So int pointer ptr just mean I have this pointer variable refer to the int variable. So if I want to refer to a double variable, I just need to define a double pointer variable. So then I can refer to the cost. So this one happen for the array as well. If you have a double array, you need to have a pointer to refer to this double array. Then this pointer should be double data type. So then you can assign the array name to the pointer. Otherwise, if you have an int variable pointer to refer to the double array, that will cause the compiling error. So that's about the initialized pointer.